Hey guys, if you have been watching my videos for any period of time or have been following me on Instagram, you probably noticed that I have quite a mug collection. And not only do I have a mug collection, I have quite a kitchen ceramics collection. Over the past few years, I have collected handmade ceramics. It really brings me joy to use handcrafted ceramics over store-bought ceramics because there's much more dedication and craft devoted to each piece. I thought it'd be fun to do a little show and tell and show you all of my ceramics and kind of give you a little backstory about each piece and how I acquired it. So let's get started. First we have this canister. I like to keep my tea in it. I have some tea here. And this is by a ceramicist named Earthen. She is based in San Francisco. She actually has a brick and mortar shop too. So if you're ever in San Francisco and you happen to be in the hate neighborhood, you should pay her a visit. So that's that. Next, this is kind of cheating actually. This I got from Anthropology. A few of the items I got from Anthropology and technically it's, well, let me explain. Anthropology does a lot of artist collaborations. So I give myself a little bit of leeway if I purchase from a big box store like Anthropology. If they did an artist collaboration, I count it as still being ethically made because I try to be as ethical as possible in my purchases and support independent artists. This mug is by a ceramicist named Kathy Terapaki. She is based in British Columbia. I really like this mug because it has a wide mouth and it's really big. I liked the gold detailing and the speckled glaze throughout. This is by a ceramicist who is based in LA. Her name is Brooke Winfrey. And this is actually the first mug that I bought to start my collection. So this is pretty special. Aww. I ended up meeting Brooke at West Coast Craft, which is a craft fair that is in San Francisco that my mom and I do twice a year for Drifter Organics. So it was super fun to meet her in real life. These two go together, kind of. They're by a Portland-based ceramicist named Mimi, and Mimi's real name is actually Michaela, which is super fun. And I like these because I just like the feel. This is a matte glaze, so it has sort of like a roughness to it, but this one is a speckled glaze, so it has more of the shiny glossy feel, and I think they look really cute, one stacked on top of another, like this. This is one of my newest additions. You probably remember seeing it in last week's video. These are called Drippy Mugs, and they are by a ceramicist based in Philadelphia. His name is Brian Januski, and I have another one. Where is the other one? Oh, here it is. I bought these two as a set, so these two go together. Now these three are all made by a ceramicist based in Brooklyn, and her name is Josephine Noel, or Noel, I, I don't know. Hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. And these are called, well this one, these are called dot mugs and then this one is called a grid mug. And they're really cool because I like the texture of these. Well these have a speckled glaze so they're like a matte but they're not a rough matte. And then on the handles they have this rubber treatment so it has a cool texture to grab onto. This is also by Brooke who made this mug. This I got at West Coast Craft when I first met Brooke in real life. This is probably my favorite mug. This is by a Portland-based ceramicist whose name is escaping me right now. Oh, I can't think. Oh, Martina Thornhill. And she makes these mugs. They're called hug mugs because obviously you put your hands around it like that and you hug a mug and it's really comforting and warm when it's cold outside and you have a nice warm drink in there. These babies sell out so fast on her website. She doesn't have an evergreen stock site. She has different launches that drop at different times and she also has pre-sales and oftentimes her pre-sales sell out within hours. So I was so happy to get my hands on this baby and it has a speckled glaze which I, I'm such a texture person. I love the feeling of like a good matte, non-glossy, speckled glaze that's still not rough for the hands, but yet is not glossy. But this one, like I don't know what kind of speckled glaze she uses, but whatever it is, I really, really like the feel of it. This mug is also by Julia, aka Earthen. It has a really pretty sky blue glaze. Again, like back to the texture, it has a nice matte texture and 
I like the fact that it's like stout and has a wide mouth. I don't know, I just like the look of the stouter wide mouth mugs and it makes it really convenient when you're whisking to make matcha. So I like to make my matcha in this mug. Moving into bowls now. This is kind of like, we're gonna move into bowls and then we're gonna go back to mugs, but I mean, it is what it is. So, this is a bowl by a ceramicist who is based in San Francisco. I met her at a craft fair that we did for Drift Organics and I got this poppy, which I eat my frozen banana ice cream out of sometimes and my mom calls it my dog bowl because it is literally like the size of a dog bowl. Plates. These two plates are by a ceramicist based in LA and they are called A Question of Eagles. They make plates, bowls, mugs. They all kind of have this nice earthy tone. Actually, this mug is also by them. So you can tell their work all kind of looks the same. Now I have these two plates. This one is by a Portland-based ceramicist. Her name is Alexandria Cummings, and she makes these really pretty speckled plates, plates, bowls, mugs and they all have these really fun colors so i love how colorful her work is but it's like colorful but it's yet muted and honestly that's how i describe my style i like to call my style colorful with a layer of fog over it because it's colorful but yet it's not like in your face barbie bright pink on this note since i'm featuring alexandria i have other things by her this mug is also by her she made this for me. It's the fruit salad colors, so that's super special. And she calls these little mugs her party mugs. This is also by Alexandria. This is a huge bowl, and I just got this, so I actually haven't used this yet. But this bowl, I, I don't know. My measurements are like so off. I they looked this bowl looked a lot smaller online. So I, when I told her I want this bowl, I thought that it was a lot more manageable of a size but this is so big, this could almost be a fruit bowl, which I'm not mad about, and I really love the color of this, too. But actually, you know, since this is deeper than this, it might be similar size, so, I mean, how funny would it be for me to be eating out of a bowl this big? I'm not above that. Okay, back to this plate. There's another plate that is, oh, here it is. It's a matching set, hold on. These two go together. This is a small version of this, obviously, and it just is a simple speckled glaze flat plate. So I feel like it'll be kind of cute if you had company over and you like put the dip in this and then you had your crudite or whatever you want to eat around here and it'd be a cute little set. This is also by Mimi who made the dot mug this mug and this mug now these three bowls are some of my favorites they're deep enough where you can eat like cereal or yogurt or something that's not solid in here but they're not huge like my dog bowl so i would say they are a respectably large size these are by our hmm, ceramicist i'm not sure that was weird. These are by a ceramicist, M.M. Clay, who I believe is based in LA. This is a matcha chawan, which is the traditional vessel Japanese drink matcha out of. And this is by a ceramicist based in Portland. The name of her ceramic shop is Wolf Ceramics. And I can't really do much with this except to like, um, I don't have my matcha whisk out right now. You whisk matcha traditionally in a chawan like this, and then you kind of Drink it like that. Okay. My mom just handed me my whisk. So if you wanted to go the traditional route, you would whisk your matcha like this so it gets all foamy, and then you drink it like this. Obviously, this is um, not an American serving size, so I tend to drink like two of these if I want to drink my matcha because this is, I don't know how many ounces this is, but this is not enough for this ignorant American, I don't know. This bowl is by Julia, again, the San Francisco-based ceramicist who um, owns... My mind is a sieve. <laughs> What's her name? Earthen. And then it goes with this bowl. I just love the matte. Like, going back to texture, mm, love this. So with these, again, I kind of cheated a little bit. I. 
Got these from Anthropology, but technically they're an artist collaboration with a ceramicist who is based in North Carolina. Her ceramics line name is Sweet One Studio. I love how cute and just feminine and classy these guys are. And the colors remind me of watercolors. Do I do anything with these plates? No. But they're just really pretty and I like to have them in my collection. Going back to Kathy Terapaki, who did the Anthro collab. This is also by her. This design reminds me of a rainbow. These two guys are by Brian Januski again. You probably recognize his drip treatment. I bought these last year as a prop to use when I shot a video for Instagram stories and a blog post about frozen banana ice cream. This I got from another craft fair that my mom and I did in Sebastopol in this past December by this ceramicist named Didim Mert or Didim Mare if she's French. I honestly don't drink too much out of this because it's so delicate. It's like a piece of art. It's kind of like a whitewash terracotta color and I love the imperfections like you can see like her thumb prints from, well not really her thumb prints but like her thumb marks from when she was creating the form of this mug. It's a really nice piece that I like to keep on display. And it has little feet too, which is so cute. Let's do these two guys at once because they're by the same ceramicist. Elatera Tile Co. is a husband-wife duo and they're based in Florida. And they make these ceramics, they mainly make bowls, I believe, but they all have this glossy glaze. This mug is technically a cheat because this is from Urban Outfitters and it's not even uh, artist collaboration so it's like a super cheat cheat but I got this as a prop for how to publish your first book short film that I made and I kept it as a keepsake because I really like the color it has like a sort of vintage throwback vibe that I really love I actually read online that if you use this mug too much these letters wear off so I don't really use this mug too much because I just kind of want to keep it in my collection and memorialize the special memory that I have of making the short film. This mug is by a ceramicist based in Portland. It's a husband-wife duo. Their line is called The Pursuits of Happiness. They make mugs, planters, pipes, if you're into some CBD. Oh, they make jewelry too. This is called The Bump Mug. It is so funky. I just love this guy. He has this weird long handle. It's like a, a sculpture. Last one. This is by a ceramicist based in Long Beach and her name is Nina Neen. She's originally from France and I think that I found her on Instagram when she was still in France and then she moved to Long Beach. Funny story, I didn't know she was going to be at West Coast Craft when my mom and I were there last summer, but she was. And then I was like, hey, do you remember me from Instagram? We talked about doing a trade, so maybe we could do a trade here. So I traded for this cool mug. It has a matte kind of rough glaze. And then it has this pink shape here. The handle is really the showstopper here. And that, my friends, concludes my kitchen ceramic store video. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and comment down below if you like to collect things. Do you like to collect mugs? Do you like to collect ceramics? Do you like to collect coins, maps, crystals? What else is there to collect? Postcards? Let me know in the comments below. Keep it sweet, make corn salad, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!